Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, this past week, I have been just feeling that I needed a reminder that I'm alive in Christ. And so I just have been listening to songs with that theme, and I have been singing songs with that theme, and I've been reading, obviously, the Word, because that tells us we are alive in Him. And um, so I'm going to read to you this morning from Ephesians 2, because it tells us what we were, but we're not that anymore, and it tells us why we're not. So starting in Ephesians 2, verse 1, once, that's in the past, that's not today, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and the inclinations of our sinful nature. But our very, by, by our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But God, in his, is, but God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For, the ra for he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. So God can point us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us as shown in all that he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. So I believe that each that applies to each one of us in this room. So this morning as we worship, it's not about the songs we sing. It's not about how talented we are or how talented we might not be at that moment in time. It is about the fact that Jesus took us out of that sin, out of that death, and brought us to life with him. And we are now seated with him. That is what matters. It doesn't matter what we look like. It doesn't matter what you look like. So close your eyes, open them, I don't care. Raise your hands in the air, don't, I don't care. Because it's not about what I will think, it's about what he thinks. So you worship the way you were created to worship. Whether it's by dancing, whether it's by painting, whether it's by just sitting in your seat and just absorbing. Sometimes you need that, and that's okay too. So it's not about actions, like, that we all see. We're not judging anybody, why should we? I don't want you to judge me about the way I worship. I am definitely not judging you. Most of the times my eyes are closed because I don't want to watch. Because I want to I want to be pointed towards him. Because it's easier that way for me to connect. So if that's you, connect with him that way. But this is not about anything but connecting with the Father so that we can worship him and not what happened yesterday or what's gonna to happen tomorrow. So thank you, Jesus, for everything that you've done for us. We just give you this time and we praise you in Jesus' name, amen.
morning and she put me on the spot a little bit because I didn't know I was singing I didn't know I was singing this song but I know it's a God thing because just like the song that she's picked out today it's about raising your voice and raising your song in the midst of adversity because some of us have been pressed down and we're like been laying on the ground I had to contend this week. Brennan and I have been contending since March for a piece of land. And we've been living with my parents for seven years, contending. And listening to the whispers of people, all the things. And we're this close. We were supposed to close this past Friday, and it didn't happen. And there was a lot of stuff. The Lord told me to go to that land on Friday amidst neighbors amidst people I don't know yet who will be my neighbors. And despite of what man thinks, worship and dance and scream for breakthrough. And I tell you what, we saw the breakthrough on Friday. So I'm saying that to say, when I dance 
is because with every stomp of my foot, I know that I am engaged with the, hev- the armies of heaven. I'm engaged with the armies of heaven. And when I step, they step. And sometimes you've got to get outside of your comfort zone and dance in front of the people who are going to judge you and say, I don't care because I'm stepping with the host of heaven. So what can man do to me? And I feel like that's the set list that just put together. And that's what this song is about. So I just want to encourage you to, when you step, you are stepping with the host of heaven, but you got to know it. I love to hear It's the sound of the Savior's robe As he walks into the room Where people pray Where we hear praises He hears faith Oh, hey, you're my soul. 
generations, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. May His favor be upon you, and a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. right behind Dave or raise your hand and he'll bring you one. I'm blessed this morning. I got double portion. I got two pieces of bread. Woo! I take double portion anytime I can. That is in the word of God. 
favor, God, and double portion. Amen. God blessing us. I want us to stay in a prayerful, sensitive to the spirit, respectful to the spirit, because there is a strong anointing here. But let's sit down a minute, and then I'm going to have you stand up. I love this song because it talks about generations. This morning we have one, two, three generations in our family here. And Mike and I are blessed that our mothers are still living, so we have that fourth generation that love Jesus. Both, all of us serve God. Do you know what a blessing that is? I could die and go to heaven right now. It wouldn't bother me a bit because God's honored his word in my life. I told him I would do whatever he wanted me to do as long as he kept my children and my grandchildren. They're my blessings. Amen. If you've got blessings, if you've got children, you're still standing for nobody. It's just keep the lights low. Those of you that are listening at home, I want you to do this with us because as an act of communion today, when we take communion, it brings healing into the circumstances of our life. And a lot of times we think that healing is just physical, but it's not. It's spiritual, it's mental, it's emotional, it's financial. God takes care of all our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. If you have children in your life, don't be ashamed that don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior or are not walking with God the way they should. Time's short. You don't have time to worry about hurting their itty bitty feelings. I can give you an unction from the Holy Spirit and that is what it is today. If your children don't know Jesus Christ, if your family doesn't know Jesus Christ, if your in-laws don't know Jesus Christ, if your neighbors don't know Jesus Christ, if your boss doesn't know Jesus Christ, you need to share it with him. That's why God has you in their lives at this moment and place and time. So as we receive communion today, if you have children that aren't walking in a full and clear knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and serving him, I want you to stand up and as an act of communion, when we take this bread, we're going to believe and receive healing into our families, unto a thousand generations should the Lord tarry. Amen. I'm doing what I've been doing for the last almost 40 years 32 we've been pastoring but mike and i were in ministry prior to even becoming engaged when we were children we were in ministry together because i had a praying grandmother and she didn't let up and it didn't matter what it looked like but she knew how to pray she knew the word of God from Genesis to Revelations. She had pastors come to her and ask her questions about the word of God that they couldn't find because they knew she'd root it out and find it. And I'm, I can't wait to see her again. She's going to be waiting up there. I believe she's up there cheering me on. Amen. Him also. Cheering us on to do the work of the ministry in our family we've had quite a few ministers and I know it's because of her prayers so don't you underestimate your prayers grandmoms and granddads and you remember the children are watching your actions amen so don't do anything that you don't want those little ones doing amen and that goes for some of you that don't have children. Children are still, a church is like a village. And it takes a village to raise children. And churches, you know, so we have some, such good support here. People love our children. And I encourage you at home, if you don't have a church, you're welcome to come here. This week, Aretta had a new great grandbaby. And she was born three and a half pounds. 
so they text me and I start praying and that baby is doing well that baby is a miracle baby I can't go into all the details but I'm telling you that was a grandmother's prayer and a great grandmom's prayer amen I'm encouraging all you moms grandmoms granddads dads don't give up do the warfare like Morgan said. I used to go, my, my kids will tell you, I used to go in their bedrooms at night at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning and pray over them, scare them. I didn't care. I just said, go back to sleep, baby. If I felt I needed to pray over them, I went and did it. They're mine. God gave them to me to raise. When they became 18, then it was kind of on their own. But as long as they were under my roof, they abided by my rules. And they were in church every Sunday. Whether they wanted to be or not. And y'all know there's seasons sometimes, right? But I'm telling you, you set the pace. So we're going to receive our communion today. Those of you that have stood, if you have children that aren't saved. And grandchildren, and maybe great-grandchildren. This is for them, we're believing. Lord God, we thank you for dying on the cross of Calvary for our sins. We thank you for what you're doing in the hearts and the lives of individuals. We thank you for touching our families and healing them and making them whole physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, financially, God. We thank you for the miracles that you're, you're just doing. Lord, you are a miracle working God and we give you glory and honor for that. We thank you for Wilma for touching her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet to the tips of her fingers, Lord. And as we receive this as a representation of this, your body, Lord, we thank you for all that you've done in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These little things make me fumble. All right. Now, Father, we thank you for giving your son, Jesus Christ, the anointed one, the firstborn of many brethren for us. We thank you, Lord, that this cup represents your precious blood. Lord, I don't know where I'd be without that precious blood being applied to my heart and my life. Now, I'm trying to put everything together. I've had three come up to me today that was receiving words from the Lord. I'm trying to put everything together. Melissa had one about the children and how God was turning the morning into gardens from the, one of the songs we sang about the children and their school situation. So we want to hold our children up before the Lord. Dorothy had that God is here. The worship was, God just was enjoying our worship, our fellowship. He was here to meet all of our needs. Katie had something that this is our breakthrough. Are you ready for your breakthrough? It all works together, folks. Amen. Our breakthrough whatever you need in your family's life in your life right now i want you to close your eyes father god we're not here just to receive things from you we're here to worship and adore you and if you never did one more thing for us it would be all right because you died on the cross of calvary for our sins and you took care of things but that precious blood's been applied to our life and there's so many promises in your word so we stand on those promises and as we receive this communion this day we thank you for complete and utter breakthrough from our children to our children to our children's children to 10,000 generations should it be in Jesus precious name thank you for your precious blood You can receive it. Did you have another song? Okay. I forgot to ask them what the last song was. Awesome. Pastor Mike's going to be so proud of you guys. And I, I just, it was good anointing, I'm telling you. You can be seated, folks. 
Pastor Mike isn't here with us this morning. He is down um, at Pastor at Ben and Rebecca Malman's church in Baltimore, ministering down there with another gentleman. Um, Pastor Ben and Pastor Rebecca are on sabbatical for a couple of months, and they're out on the West Coast, and so um, their leadership and church is going well and going on, and uh, Pastor Mike went down last night, played the piano for the minister as he was uh, prophetically motivated, and, and that helps move things along in the spirit, and so he's back down there again this morning, and uh, so... Uh, he might make it to a little bit of our service. I don't know. He said he'd try. Um, it depends on if they want to take him out to lunch or whatever. So I think their service is supposed to be over around 11-ish. So I want to thank um, Jess. She did a wonderful job putting the worship together. And um, Like I say, it takes a village. She called in via Morgan this week and to help out and all because, you know, August is vacation month, so everybody, it's a lot of people on vacation. So, Father, I just thank you for your goodness is great towards us, and your truth endures throughout all generations. We want to receive our tithes and offerings this morning. Amen. Malachi 310, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That reminds me of when Pastor Mike, when the pandemic hit, about every week we were trying to, you know how everybody was running here, there, and everywhere looking for the most important things, the TP. Well, you know, I'm, I'm just one of those people, I usually have plenty, so that wasn't an issue, but I started supplying, just buying up canned goods and stuff like that, like you do, because I didn't know if I would get calls from anybody that might need it. And so we got, we did this for about four or five weeks in a row, and Pastor Mike stood in front of the pantry, he was helping me put stuff away, and he's like, do you even know what you have in here? And I'm like, uh-huh, <laughs> I do. So what I've done this summer, I was telling Michael, I said, yeah, we're eating out of our pantry now because I'm trying to clean it out and make sure, you know. So God gives us more than enough. Amen. His blessings are to, there's, there's not room enough to contain it sometimes. I was thinking to myself, I should have let them put that second pantry in for me. But I told him, no, give me a desk instead. And I rethought that. Not to hoard up but always to give out. We are blessed to be a blessing. Amen? So let's go to our confession. Lord, teach us to focus on the unseen, not on the seen, and to live by faith, not by sight. Strengthen my faith to not lose heart by the things I see and hear around me. Today I choose to walk by faith, see the goodness of God. Leave that there. Go back to the strengthen. Let's read that again and really pay attention. Strengthen my faith to not lose heart by the things I see around me. Today I choose to walk by faith and see the goodness of God. You watch 10 minutes of a news broadcast and I guarantee you, your face trying to be robbed. So you guard, you're in charge of what goes into these eyes and these ears. Amen? So Father, Pastor Mike and I join our faith, along with the leadership of this church, with all those that give, that you bless them, you meet their needs, and Lord, we thank you for what you're doing, and let it be exceedingly abundantly above what we pray or believe in Jesus' precious name, that we can do that which you called us to do. Amen. I want to remind you we're still doing Operation Blessing and Christmas child, and there's a box in the foyer for the homeless, so you can bring in um, things and put items and put in that box. And so we wanted to let you, uh, you know, we always want to have an opportunity to give to the community. Children's workers, you can go to the back and have a good time. And, okay. So, um, Dave and I have had it on our heart for a while uh, to start up Friday night prayer again. Now, this Friday coming up is our first Friday prayer, and that's with uh, 
led by my dad, Pastor Mike, and the worship band, and they're all involved. But we're going to do the other Fridays of the month. And it's going to be an informal thing um, where the first 20 minutes, 30 minutes, we're going to discuss different things about the Holy Spirit and the move and flow of the Holy Spirit. So it's a good time to come if you have questions, um, if you don't know why certain things are done certain ways, if, if you didn't grow up in a church like this and you, you, you want to ask some questions. We're talking very short little bit of teaching discussion, not like a small group class where I talk for an hour and a half. We're going to just really keep it informal. And really what it is, is and watching Brandon and Morgan up there this morning, just God brought me back to our old sanctuary. And my first leadership position here at the church, I was 18 or 19 years old, and I took it upon myself to start a drama team. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing, and I had only kids, and I think Morgan was like 13 or 14. Um, you know, so I had between 14 and 19 was my group. And we would come every Monday night, and sometimes we would, sometimes we would practice, and other times we would just turn worship on, and us kids, like we were kids, and nobody taught us to do this. We would fall on our faces in front of the Lord and just worship and just pray and just press into the more. And I feel so strongly that our church, it's like there's rain on this roof. You know, if you've ever been in a tent when it's raining, and if you reach up and you touch that tent, you get soaked. And that's what we want to do. We don't have a title for this group just yet. We're, we're working on a name. But that's what we want to do on Friday nights is we want to give a little bit of teaching and equipping because that's what we do. Um, it's a good time. Come with your questions. Come with what you want to know. But then we're just going to spend the rest of the time just touching that Amen. veil and getting soaked in the glory and, and the power of God and just praying. No agenda, no lists, Amen. just Jesus. Amen. Sounds good. Amen. Amen. Friday. This Friday, uh, first Friday, is we have prayer. We have some worship beforehand. And um, God knows this nation needs prayer. Amen. So if you can only come for 10, 15 minutes, that's fine. Just pop in, do what you can do, and go on home, have your dinner. I, I get it. We start at 7 o'clock. You're more than welcome to come and be a part. And that's for everybody. We don't care what your, your age is. Amen. Okay, well, Michael has a good word in due season for us this morning, I know. And uh, thank him for filling in and having a word and always being available. And um, I know he's going to bless us. Come on up. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning. Am I on? Am I on? You can hear. Great. Holy Spirit has done my message for me. This is easy. I don't know if you're picking up on the theme here, but it's remembrance. Amen. Remember. Think. Ponder. Crickets. <laughs> Be at peace. Why did we receive communion today? Amen. Good. You got the A plus already this morning, Katrina, because Jesus told us to. He told us to. Luke chapter 22, I'm going to read 19 and 20. The Lord's Supper is instituted. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Follow along your preferred text because the word of the Lord does not what? Return void. I want to hear some feedback. The anointing was heavy, but now's not the time. I need to hear some feedback. So just let the base, you know, the Holy Spirit, keep you loose, keep you pliable, okay? Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he thanked God for it, he broke it into pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This wine is the token of God's new covenant to save you, an agreement sealed with the blood I will pour out for you. They were gathered at Passover. 
What was Passover that the Jews celebrated? A remembrance that they were spared, the children of Israel were spared the tenth and final plague of Egypt, which was death of all the firstborn sons and all the firstborn livestock. It was a remembrance of that. And I know it was prophetically powerful that Jesus chose Passover to institute communion. And as the disciples took that first communion, Jesus told them that the cup was the new covenant between God and his temple and his people, I'm sorry, confirmed by his blood, poured out as a sacrifice for them and us. And I believe, and this is the first chapter of Michael, Jesus also told us to remember his sacrifice because we so easily forget as humans. We so easily forget what he's done. We forget how far we've come in Christ. We forget how far we have to go in victory in him because of his sacrifice. We forget that, and he knows that because we're human. And there is nothing that we have dealt with, will deal with, are tempted with, aren't tempted with, that he had not dealt with because he bore all things for us. He knows us. He knows our little frailties. We get so caught up in the day-to-day minutia of our lives and the big things of our lives that we forget to say, wow, you're enormous, God. And that same God is the God we serve. As soon as we experience breakthrough in one area, we're focused immediately on the next breakthrough. The next thing we got to have, the next want, 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 want. We're full of wants. I'm full of wants. You know, sooner you get one thing done, well, what are you going to do again? Where are you going next? If you go on vacation, where are you going next? They never even ask you how it went. What's next? What's next? We focus on the next challenge or the next desire, forgetting to take a sailor pause to pause and calmly think, to lift up thanksgiving for the victory we are currently in. What we're experiencing, to fully experience the woe, God, of the situation and the peace that comes after a battle. The title of today's message is Happiness is Junk Mail. By show of hands, who in here has made a mistake? Okay. By one more show of hands, who in here has made a big mistake in their lives? We're all united in that. It's easy to remember those big mistakes, isn't it? Sometimes. And you know, even if we forget there's always someone who will lovingly remind you of everything you've ever done wrong. Forgive them. It's more important to focus and share the lessons learned from those mistakes, those big mistakes, than it is being mad at them for reminding you of your mess-ups. to remember the faithfulness of God during those times we'd rather forget. We need to remember because it will make us more merciful when we're hearing the same thing that we've done come out of the mouth of someone else. You can say, let's take a sailor pause here and let me share with you my life and what I've walked through. Don't do it. Or, you done did what I did. This is how you can help get out of it. We need to remember how vulnerable it feels to know you messed up big. And remember that there's a God that will walk you through it. And it can take years, I know, to get out of some situations. But God was right there. It was not all bad through the whole time. 
And when I say years, I'm talking eight long years. I walked. God never forsook me. And I tell you what, I might forget a lot. I don't forget the lessons learned. And I've shared before that I'm very blessed that I still have a very large portion of the clientele that I've had for 28 of the 30 years I've been a hairdresser. Um, 28 years in Bel Air. And I had one particular client, because of this, I call them the 93 Club. In 1993, I met them and they're all part of the 93 Club. And I have a large 93 Club. One lady in particular, I always admired her life. Have you ever met people that just are doing it? Doing life. Good house, good family. A long awaited for baby that came at 39. When everybody else was just dropping babies like crazy, she waited. Good business. I could relate because the business they owned, I worked for one just like it. And I knew what hell on earth it was. And I always thought, wow, you got the life. Travel, money. They worked hard. They worked hard, and I always knew they worked hard. Both she and her husband. My own life was rocking. Because never at any time did I ever compare my worth towards someone else. You do you. That wasn't my dream. I had my own. But I always, always liked her because they did nice. They did nice things. I'd say, go to Myrtle Beach. Guess what? They went to Myrtle Beach. I said, stay here. They stayed there, and they liked it too. We had a lot in common. It was neat the way God will bring friends into your life. I never was really social with them or anything like that, but it was neat. I liked their life, and I liked mine. I did. It was going good here at church. The church was growing, and I was growing, and I liked it. Fast forward 16 years. Mm. Both of our lives turned upside down difficult. Rubber hitting the road rough. Her marriage disintegrated. Not because she wanted it to. Money, gone. Gone. Frittered away. Her work, the sweat of her brow, gone. Snatched. And not by her doing either. Me, I overspent. I took it that it was my due to have what I wanted to have and the way I wanted to have it because I was single and I was living the life and I wasn't shacking up and I was living according to the word of God so therefore I deserved. Big mistake. You only deserve what you got money to pay for. Now that's my truth. So here I am. When you've got more going out than you've got coming in, you better make, make, make a change. And I will give credit to Mrs. Barbie Lai, Clarence's wife, because she said that one time in a prayer group, not at me, but I was there and that bore witness and that's when the change started to come around. Simple wisdom. So thank you, Barb. During appointments, because I still worked, had to. We talked, we encouraged, we commiserated, all the things that Christians do for one another. And after several rough years, God brought us through to the other side of our individual Red Seas. And I like that it was mentioned today. I like the way the Holy Spirit gets a service together. And we were reminiscing one day, and I said, you know, I've discovered that happiness is junk mail. And we laughed and laughed, but I meant it. And she's like, what? And I said, happiness is junk mail. I used to dread going to my mailbox. And I live in a condo. I've got to go past it to get in my house. I used to hate to open up that door because it would be another bill, another late notice, just driving home what a failure I was and how much I was blowing it. How I wasn't bringing it. And when a man feels like he's not bringing it, ladies, it is devastating. We are raised, uh, created to provide. Doesn't mean you can't provide for yourselves, but we, it is part, I think it's part of like a DNA thing. We just provide. And 
And for the record, during these rough years, I never at any time didn't tithe. I never at any time didn't offer. I never at any time did not or refused to minister. You can play by the rules, but if you're not playing smart and you're playing by your head and figuring things out, you can get yourself and still in a lot of mess and still be in the will of God. Come on. I did it. And the thing is, when you don't have the stresses of family by choice, of a spouse by choice, the only time I have stress is if I spend too much. Now that's God's truth. Now that's just how simple a spring water Michael's life is. I stay out of Target, I sleep in peace. <laughs> but I never forgot from whence I came. There's a lot of that debt that I worked off that I don't regret. I took two huge retirement vacations back to back. Don't regret one of it. And I mean, I paid off every dime. One was to Russia. Now that's kind of shut down. Most travel shut down. I did those trips. They were once in a lifetime opportunities. I knew it. And the, I really felt like the Lord said, go ahead and do those things. So not everything was wrong, but it did create stress. I had to learn that my covenant was with the Lord. Really get it in my spirit. And I praised him during those rough times. And I did not run around poor mouthing it. I didn't run around lying. But I didn't run around poor mouthing it. I can't stand that. I got myself into the situation. I'm not going to sit there and drag somebody else down. And let me tell you, a lot of y'all was rocking life. That eight years, shoot, a lot of you was doing it. And I was like, get it. And I really wasn't jealous because, I, like I said, I don't judge myself by anyone else. My covenant was with the Lord and he honored his covenant with me and walked me through the hard lessons I had to learn from the mistakes that I had made, from the problems. Sometimes some of this was just what life throws up at you. It was rough. And there are many aspects of your lives that I can't relate to, but we have enough common ground and shared experiences in our lives to help the fellow man along. And I said fellow man, not just fellow Christian. Because the greatest evangelism we can give is sharing our testimony and taking the time to tell someone that they matter and show them that you ma they matter. Yes. Not beating them over the head, you're a sinner and you're going to hell. Hey, you might have to do that sometime. But really, most people that I've heard talk about becoming born again, having a born again experience, weren't treated roughly. They were treated with love. They were treated with respect and kindness. We need to remember what we needed when we became born again. Remember that night. I remember that night in 1988. And I knew that if I had died prior to this, I would be in heaven because I was raised, as Pastor shared earlier, by a, pray, by a praying grandmother, not raised by her, but, you know, had that influence. I went to church with Deb and Mike, and when I got, said, as she's in my heart at a very, very young age, I meant it. And I never backslid from that. Yeah, I partied a lot. Yeah, I did a little bit of um, substances that maybe I shouldn't have done. But I never at any time didn't pray. Now that's me. Take it up with the Lord. Was I surfing on the edge? Maybe. I was surfing on the edge of my physical life, but I don't think I was surfing on the edge of my spiritual life because I never not acknowledged God. And I prayed, but I was praying as a child from what I remembered from childhood. I wasn't growing that relationship. And as a 22-year-old man, I, needed to, I realized, wait a minute, I'm remembering Bible stories that are true, taught to me as a child, but I was ignorant from 11 to 22. That's what made me go to church the night I got born again. I wanted to learn more. And I didn't go to the victorious faith. I didn't want to go with the pastors because I wanted to go and have my own experience because I wasn't sure I ever wanted to live like them because I wanted my own life. I remember that when I talk to people. I remember how you feel that your sin is so much worse than anyone's else. 
Well, God does not categorize sin. I'm sorry. Right. We do that. We do that as Christians on this plane. We do that. Right. This is a big sin. This is a minor sin. This is something God will, you know, uh, let pass by. But this is a major sin. No, that's anti-scriptural. I have never seen that. Sin is sin. And you've got to be led by your own spirit. And if you've got to ask somebody if something's sin, guess what? I'll tell you that, it's sin. Amen. You've got to ask, is this sin? Yeah. Learn from Mike. Because I remember how I thought. And I always thought, well, you know, people do thus and so and thus and so. And then there's thus and so and thus and so. But nowhere in the word of God does it say that this is the worst. The only thing that I've found through that is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And I've yet to really hear people blaspheme the Holy Spirit. You know, I've heard people mock tongues. And I've told people, careful. From my limited understanding, that could be almost blaspheming the Holy Spirit. That's the only time, and I've only done that twice to people. And that's a, a guarding to them because I care about them. Right. And then I move back because if they get struck down, I ain't going with them. <laughs> Don't roll that way. <laughs> One lesson I've learned is to always, no matter what you're dealing in right now, be about the Father's work. And we hear that. Everything in our walk with Jesus is repetition and remembrance. Everything. The scripture, the scripture is still the scripture. It doesn't change. And we read it and we hear it and it's given in messages. The 30 some years I've been in church, the same scriptures, but each time it's different depending on how and what you need at that particular time. Whether you're tired, whether you're properly caffeinated, whether you had a nice breakfast or whether your stomach's growling is going to really determine what you receive. Now that's just the physical part. Spiritually, when you really feel the presence of the Lord, which is different for everybody. You receive things differently then. But it's still remembrance and repetition because that is how we retain and grow as humans. It takes a long time for sometimes the points to come across and to really take seed and plant in our heart and spirit to where, we, number one, we grow from that, or number two, we yield that acreage to the Holy Spirit to make Amen. changes that he has to make. Some of these changes we have to make. We had to determine as individuals to walk through this door this morning. That's a choice we made. Choosing to just open yourself up before worship and then the Lord coming in and touching us. That's his choice. His presence is his choice and his pleasure. Us being receptive, we have to choose that. You think I haven't sat here like a bullfrog and not wanted to participate? Holy Spirit always wins with me. I love the Holy Spirit. But you think I haven't had an attitude? <laughs> I'm tired and I want to be home. I'm tired, I don't feel like being here. Why they look at me like that? Why they say that smart thing about my hair? Why they do that? I don't say nothing about their heads, you know? <laughs> you know? You know how we are. You think I'm, I'm not the only one. I know better. I got ears like a lynx. I know. Let's turn to Deuteronomy. And we're going to be in chapter 8, and I'm going to read 10 through 18. Now, most of the... Um, Festivals also that the um, Israelites and even the uh, Jew Jewish uh, community today celebrate are festivals of remembrance. Yeah. We don't have that many as Christians. Now, we can adopt and remember Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah and really understand what's going on. I always love the story of Hanukkah because it came straight out of the Bible. They all did. But as Christians... Unless we really study and learn that, and I was fortunate to sit in Bible studies with uh, people that were really had a heavy uh, Messianic uh, calling on their lives. To learn these things, we have 4th of July. <laughs> but what is that? Remembrance of a price paid. So I'm not making light of any of that, but do you understand what I mean by that? Everything is remembrance. But we, as, as a culture, a Christian culture, we don't really have those uh, seasons of remembrance. We have Christmas, but that can cover anything. And we just think, oh, well, that's just Christmas. That's, you know, but it's a remembrance of the miracle. Yeah. We have Easter. And we remember Easter, you know, it's new shoes and you show up and you, and you go to church and then you have a nice dinner. 
It was prophetic fulfillment of Christmas. When you look at the full, full line of everything that Christ was born, lived, and died to do and rose again. So let's read Deuteronomy 8.10. The command to remember the Lord. Be careful to obey. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm really ready to read the whole chapter. And I'm not putting you through that today because the Lord said to read these. Okay. Let me see. All right. And when you have eaten your fill, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. But that is the time to be careful. Beware that in your plenty you do not forget the Lord your God and disobey his commands, regulations, and laws. For when we have become full and prosperous and have built fine homes to live in, and when your flocks and herds have become very large and your silver and gold have multiplied along with everything else, that is the time to be careful. Do not become proud at that time and forget the Lord your God who, as I said before, stayed on the mountain, whoops, 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 I think I'm, there we go. As I stayed on the mountain in the Lord's presence for 40 days and 40 nights. I have done this the first time. Wait a minute, I have skipped chapters all over here. I apologize. It has everything to do with the fact that my study Bible was on my desk last night while I was eating a snack. <laughs> Truth. All right. I got it. Just be at peace. Can't you tarry for just a minute? There we go. Do not forget that he led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with poisonous stakes and scorpions, where it was so hot and dry. He gave you water from the rock. He fed you with manna in the wilderness, food unknown to your ancestors. He did this to humble you and test you for your own good. He did it so you would never think that it was of your own strength and energy that made you wealthy. Always remember that it is the Lord your God who gives you power to become rich, and he does it to fulfill the covenant he made with your ancestors. We forget. We have to remember the Lord in the good times, especially in the good times. And while you're in the middle of the good times, enjoy that good time. But remember from whence you came. Yes. Remember those rough times. Remember how difficult it can be. And remember what the Lord's already brought you through. Amen. He's brought us all through a lot. Yeah. We've all had stuff that we've stood for, loved ones that we've stood and prayed for. Terrible things, but we've, we need to remember the good things too. It's not looking back over, walking around in ash and sackcloth all the time. Remember the blessings of God. Your kids being born healthy. Amen. Getting that job you needed. Getting the house you needed. Remember and rejoice in the good times. Amen. It's not just about the bad times. Because the Lord is the one that carries us through all the times. Yeah. And we need to remember what the Lord has done and what he's doing on a daily basis. The word tells us in Isaiah 26, 3, that he will keep in perfect peace those who trust in him and yes. whose thoughts are fixed on him. Yes. And I really do believe that I'm in a room of people, our thoughts are fixed on the Lord. Yes. But we need to remember yes. just who we are. Yes. Even more, who he is. Yes. Yes. God is so good. We need to remember, too, that the Lord is never the last. And we need to share this. The Lord isn't. Everybody's like, when something bad happens, oh, pray. The Lord isn't the last resort. That's right. That's right. He's so jealous of us. He's told us he's jealous of us and our love and our attention. But he's our total source and supply. He needs to be honored first. Take the problems, take the goodness, take the rejoicing to him first. And watch how you become and get into an attitude and lifestyle of gratitude. And it does grow, and you can train yourself to just automatically look for that. And I'm not talking about being Pollyanna. Yes, I'm an I personality. Yes, that glass is always overflowing. 
but you can get in the mindset of gratitude and being grateful and saying, okay, Lord, I really want to see the positive in this, even facing the bad. Or if it's just all good, Lord, your portion first. Thank you. Tithe it, your gratitude. Tithe it. We honor the Lord when we remind ourselves of his faithfulness and we remember all that he's done. All that he's done in our family's lives. All he's done in the lives of people that have passed on, our loved ones that we hate to lose. But what about the wonderful things that they accomplished? I ponder those things. Pastor Debbie shared about our grandmother. I remember sitting beside her and she drew me Bible pictures. I was, might have been five years old. And then I smarted off to my father and I got spanked and she waited scowling at my father till he left the room and she gave me a full-size Snickers bar. <laughs> and you know, why lie? I, of, I often thought, and I thought then as a little kid, if I get him to do it again tomorrow, will I get another full-size Snickers bar? <laughs> now that's wrong, but that's Michael. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> remember from when she came. Our testimony in sharing God's faithfulness keeps our faith stirred up and it keeps us humble when times are good. Yeah. Revelation 12, 11 tells us that we overcome by what? The blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. You've got to give your testimony to overcome by it. Amen. And your testimony can be a testimony in progress. We're all works in progress. I don't have a problem here, and I just want to hear people talk. I want to hear what they have to say. I want to hear what the Lord's doing in your lives and what you expect Him to do and what you're standing for Him to do and that you're, you can see it. But when these things happen, rejoice and remember what it was like to scratch. And when you don't have to scratch and things are real good and you got a full plate of fat and good meat, remember what it was like when you didn't have it. And that's the way to roll. Never be ashamed of where you come from, be it situational or familial. God does not make trash. We as humans label people with that and those judgments. Do their actions? Are actions common? Yes. Can we act trashy? Yes. But God did not create refuse. He created us in his own image. And he can't create something that he, is, that he is not himself. Never let the enemy make you think that your sin or your problem is something God can't forgive or lead you out of. And that's for you at home. Because I know some of you are watching. And I know what held me in my chair and kept me from growing spiritually. Thinking that I had somehow done something so horrible. And it's a lie from the enemy and you're hearing it from Michael today. Sin is sin is sin is sin. And the blood of Jesus Christ, when we ask him in our hearts and ask for, for that forgiveness, it covers it all. And guess what? God doesn't remember it. Amen. It took me years to cross over my own Red Sea. But it wasn't all terrible. It wasn't. Family grew. Brandon Morgan got married. Katie and Dave got married. Good things happen. Heck, my mama got married. <laughs> and that was really when I was really stepping out at the other end. It's when mom got married. And, and it's odd, but you look back and you think it's very surreal. But in the midst of all the good things, the pastors and my mom had fought cancer. And praise God, one in the name of Jesus. <laughs> but that was hard. But in the midst of that, we had a new baby. Asher was born. You get so much salty and sweet in this life, you feel like you're like this half the time. God will keep you centered. Live and remember the good and the bad, but you remember God's presence in all of it. One of the worst things, I guess so juvenile, as a child, you think that as a Christian, you're not going to have any of those challenges. And Lord, I'm telling you what, boy, that's a rough awakening when you realize bad things happen to good people just like good things happen to bad people. The unsaved drop babies like cats. And then you see a Christian couple struggling. I don't understand it. But does that mean that that baby shouldn't be rejoiced over? It's a new human. 
It was born to have a relationship with God. You know, I don't understand the way things happen. I don't. And I hear the things that I hear the most are very personal things because of what I do. And all I can share is my memories and my experiences. I don't know why these things happen. I don't know why you're waiting. No, you're not a horrible person and God doesn't hate you and you're not being punished. I don't know why. I do know that we have human frailties genetically. I don't know why things happen. I have a lot of questions, just like you. But the difference is, we have the life and power and mercy of God within us to extend that to people around us. I learned old dogs can learn new tricks. I learned that there's no shame in saying, I can't afford that right now. Ooh, I hated it. Oh, my daddy owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And I can't afford to go out to lunch in a movie? Couldn't. But right now is not forever. Right now is not the end of time. Temporary. It's a vapor. It really is. And half the time, you can end up watching it free online by the time you want to see that movie. You know? You don't have to be caught up and don't ever judge yourself. Again, don't judge yourself by what other people and other people's standards of living. You are a unique gem in your own. As rough as it was, I was never forsaken. You were never forsaken. And nor did either of us, as far as I know, anyone within my hearing ever had to beg bread. I might have had simple dinners, but I never had to beg bread. And I wouldn't have had to have a simple dinner if I didn't have pride that kept me from saying, hey, wait a minute, I need some groceries. I didn't starve, I didn't lose a pound. Isn't it amazing you could be going through the roughest time financial and you blow up like a bullfrog? Because you eat your emotions. You don't have to eat your emotions. You can roll that onto the Lord. And that's Michael saying it. I have, you know, I got four pounds of my COVID fat off and I'm quite, praise the Lord, I'm waiting for more. Yes. Yes. Know your covenant. But even more importantly, know the God that made that covenant and loved you enough to desire you to have that relationship with him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this service. I thank you, Lord, that from beginning to end, it was remembrance of who you are. Lord, I thank you, Lord, the word can't be twisted or turned or changed in any way, shape, or form. But Lord, I know the unction of your spirit. And Holy Spirit, take this word, drive it home, drive it into the hearts of the people, Lord, and help us all to grow and to know to share you and to remember just what you've done. And I speak your peace over each person here. Amen. Pastor Deb, that's my word. Amen. That was good. Good word in due season. What a blessing. What a blessing. Um, we're going to close our service now. Katie, can you just come and kind of close the thing? I want to pray. Father God, we just thank you for what you're doing in the hearts and the lives of individuals. Lord, I thank you for all those listening at home that you would be with them. Stretch your hand towards Michael. We thank you that you restore, Lord Jesus, and strengthen. Amen. Thank him for the time that he has put into this lesson. It's a good word in due season. Thank you that the seed has fallen on good ground, and the Holy Spirit will water it and strengthen it. And, Lord, we just give you glory and honor for the blessings of Abraham being upon Michael's life. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. amen.